everybody, I'm back, and I'm here to show you how to catch the big flounder year after. Now, whether you just started flounder fishing, or you've been flounder fishing for a long time and you're looking for a new technique, I have the information for you. So stick to the end, watch the whole video. If you like it, hit the like button, and if you enjoy this content and you want to see more, subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any awesome content. I'm going to start by showing you guys the rig I use to catch the big flounder. So, here we go. Alright, so getting right into it, I'm going to be using pink line because the normal line doesn't show up on the camera. So I'm going to use that to demonstrate. Alright, so I've probably got about two feet of my line, and I'm going to start off by making a fold, probably about three inches. So, as you can see, I folded the line back three inches. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to wrap it around my finger so I have the hole there. And then I'm going to take the part I folded and bring it through the hole I just made. So I'll tighten that up. Make sure it's tight. Pull as hard as you can. As you can see, it did not come out. And I'm going to trim the tag. I like to trim it relatively short. I do leave a little bit in case it does slip, which rarely ever happens. And now I'm going to go up and make a dropper loop. If you don't get it on this example, there's plenty of other examples online and on YouTube. So I'm going to basically make a fold here. Now I have my line here. And again, this is a dropper loop. If I don't explain it well enough, look it up on YouTube or look it up online. And I basically wrap one of the sides that I just folded around my main line. So I'll do that about four to five times. Three, four and then I'll have a hole that I make and I'll take the loop I made and I'm going to tighten this with my teeth so I'm going to hold this part with my teeth and pull on these two sides and I'll tighten right there and that's not going to come undone these loops will allow you to switch up your hooks, jig heads, whatever it is that you're putting on easy, very fast if something happens to them, you can just switch them right out. And normally, I'll top it off with a swivel, and I will use a reverse clinch knot for that. And basically, I fold it again, and I spin the swivel four times. I will, the hole I just made right there, hard to see, but I made one. I'll take my tag and put it through there, and then I will take my tag and put it back through the hole I just made. I make another hole when I'm putting it through that hole, so I made another hole there, and I'm going to take it back through. This is hard to tighten, so I'll tighten it like this, pull as hard as I can, make sure it's tightened. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to trim the tag so I'm going to now take the line and put it through the eye of the jig head like so and once I've put taken it through the line once I've taken it through the eye of the jig head I'm going to bring it back around the whole body and pull it tight so for the bottom once you've done that um, I like a jig head which is this right here I like a bucktail um, those both work really well. And for the top, I use a bait holder. I like a 2 aught or a 3 aught bait holder hook. So I'm going to take the bait holder and do the exact same thing I did with the jig head. Thread it through the same way. Once I've gotten it through, I'm going to take it back around. And then, boom. So there you go, you've got both your hook on top and your jig head on your bottom, there's the hook on the bottom, and then for the trailer, what you're going to put on this hook, it's called Berkeley Gulp, two words to flounder fishing, Berkeley Gulp, this is not Berkeley Gulp, I don't have any Berkeley Gulp with me right now, I'm going to use this, here's a picture of Berkeley Gulp on the screen right now. That's what it looks like. Go buy it. 
Um, you can come in the big packs, or you can get them in little packs. Normally, the bigger ones are about $25. A little bit pricey, but 100% worth it. So, I'm basically, I'm just going to take my, this is a trailer here. This is not, again, not Berkeley Gulp. I'm going to take it. This is the top, and this is the bottom. I'm going to take it and put the head through the hook, like this. Now, I'm going to thread it all the way down to the bottom, not to the top, common mistake, but to the bottom. Once it's at the bottom, I'm going to push it back through, and now you have your trailer. The tail right here is what does all the work. You can jig this, you can swim this, you can slowly retrieve it, you can do whatever. If you want to bounce off the bottom, whatever, but this is what the tail is what's doing the work. So on the bottom here, I do a 4 inch Berkeley Gulp, and on the top, I do a 2 or 3 inch. That's just how I like it. I like the top hook normally to be smaller. Um, it's working two different bait columns, so you're working the bottom here. And then, depending on how deep it is, you're working the top. On this top one, I will catch a lot of weak fish, striper, bluefish on the top, as well as the bottom. So you're not only catching flounder. On the bottom, you normally would only catch flounder. You might get some weak fish or a bluefish or a striper. So it's a pretty versatile rig. You won't catch any of the fish you don't want to catch, like dogfish or sea bass or any of that. The oyster toadfish, none of that. You won't catch any of that on this. That's why I like it. It's free of that stuff. That's how you tie it. Now I'm going to go into where to fish and when to fish. Alright, so this is underwater footage by John Skinner, and right now he is drifting with a bucktail, and it looks like there's a piece of squid on the end. Um, as you can see right there, the flounder is buried in the mud, or the sand on the bottom, and he's waiting for the prey to come by. He doesn't seem interested in the bucktail, but this man is also jigging with the exact rig I showed you earlier. And as you can see right here, he come, he's coming over for it, and he wants that jig. Now you'll see him whack it around and bite onto it a bunch of different times, but he really likes his jig. Um, there's a lot of action to it right there. Uh, the man tries to set the hook, misses it, and he's still on it. Most fish would have let go. They would have gone after something else, but this fish is still on it. He really wants it. Right there, he's holding onto it again, and this is a really good example of what the, these fish are doing, and this is on the outgoing tide, this is in a deep hole. Right there, the fish gets hooked. He catches that fish. I believe that was about a 23-inch flounder. Really nice size, very big. And right here is a weird clip of a squid grabbing onto the bucktail. I've never actually seen that before, but um, that caps off the video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I want to see what you guys are doing with the rigs and the information I give you. Um, if it works or not, if it does, please send it to me. I want to see that. I'll shout you out in the next video. For my birthday, hopefully I'm going to get a GoPro. I asked for one, so you guys will see my point of view while I'm fishing. You'll see a lot of cool blow-ups, and you'll get to see all the action. Right there, there's another flounder going after his jig. They really like that jig. Um, but if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and peace out. Cause